this week on Rockstar Superhero. Recently, I had the opportunity to jump into truly musical rarefied air. I spoke to George Constantine a few days ago, and as you can imagine, it was sublime. He's a truly rare talent and a man of remarkable words and thoughts. George is always working on something powerfully symphonic, and his newest material sticks with this mesmerizing tradition. His music crosses a number of genres and is both revelatory and penetrating. Mark my words, George isn't just a rare bird but a man of grace and thoughtfulness. And fortunately for me, I can now honestly call him a friend. So make sure you stick this out and listen to the entire hour because George has something to say. This is my sweet conversation with George Constantine, the Greek guitar god on the Rockstar Superhero Podcast. My latest uh, album uh, it is a concept album, but um, you know, uh, all that dark and moody um, atmosphere uh, initially was created because I was feeling that way mm -hmm. due to the coronavirus situation. So mm -hmm. again, um, we have a, a very, um, I, I don't know how to say it, it, will, it was a good opportunity to create something unique because mm. we have lived uh, a, a very unique situation. Yes, yes, it's so true. The, the coronavirus has become either one of two things to me. It's become the great equalizer, right? It's, it's kind of made us all on the even playing field, whether we're yes, you know, yes. we wealthy or poor, um, Democratic or Republican. <laughs> In America, it's very bad, my friend. I tell you this, uh, but but all these things being said, um, it has forced people to be thoughtful in how they engage in their life. How do I accelerate my strengths, and how do I put aside once and for all the things that I've wasted so many years on? Right, exactly. the, it, 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 it's it's woken us up. I think. So above all, as sad as it's been and losing so many people, and I don't know what it's like in Greece, but I imagine it's been tough. It's um, bad. It's bad. It's yeah, bad. yeah. Are you are you are you back in are you back in a quarantine stage in, in Greece? No, 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 no. Okay. I don't think a quarantine would be um, something we will see again in the future. Mm, mm. No quarantine for us, at yeah. least for us. Yeah, we're on the edge here in the states. Yeah. Uh, Specifically near Seattle, um, uh, the governor of our state has pulled things back quite a bit in the last week, and so now everybody's masking up again. Um, so it's a it's a bit frustrating and discouraging, but again, we get through it, right? Of course, we do, and we will be better after that. We will. So let me ask about your musicianship. Um, yes, was guitar. A, a natural fit for you right from the beginning? Um, or are you an example of just massive will and a heavy duty practice schedule because you're so clearly gifted? Uh, you, you know, uh, no, guitar was not my, uh, my, my first, you know, weapon of choice. Mm. Uh, as a matter of fact, I wanted to learn um, a Greek instrument. It's called uh, Lyra. It's mm -hmm. um, a traditional instrument here in Greece. It's like a violin, but you play it um, on, on, on your lap in a different orientation. Uh, it's a bowed instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was uh, the first instrument uh, that I really liked. Uh, it's timbre, and I wanted to learn. And the guitar came way after that. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I have... Okay, the guitar is my main uh, tool of expression. Uh, but I don't think 
the guitar is uh, something, you know, okay, I'm a guitar player, but I don't think the guitar defies me that much, defines mm. me that much. Um, of course, I have practiced hours and hours a day. Uh, obviously, my first musical uh, inspirations were uh, guitar players. But um, right here and now that I'm talking to you, I don't think the guitar is my main, you know, thing. Interesting. I think music is my main thing. Ah, oh, okay. And uh, when I'm orchestrating or trying to create music, I don't really think, and I don't have, uh, you know, a mental processing as a guitar player, but as a musician. And mm. uh, if you have uh, listened to my album, you can understand that it's not guitar driven, not at all. No, um, it's there true. Are many, many parts that uh, do not have guitar. So uh, I may have practiced music and guitar playing and, you know, the technical stuff. But at the end of the day, I, I want to think myself as a musician, you mm -hmm. know, with the, the quality meaning of the term. Mm -hmm. Well, if that makes any sense. It does. It does. But since you were interested in the Lyra in the beginning, how did the guitar accidentally sort of become the thing we identify you with? I mean, what age did this journey begin? Uh, first of all, uh, I remember myself listening to music uh, and enjoying listening to music, but not really as a listener, uh, more as a potential player. So mm. music, uh, musicmanship and uh, was something way early on knew I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted, I, I've learned initially Lyra, but here in Greece and especially in Athens, we don't have um, that kind of school that you will learn uh, Lyra the, the right way. Okay. So th the next um, option was obviously the guitar. So it was kind of, uh, you know, uh, by luck. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to learn something as a musical instrument. Uh, piano was way big, and I, I didn't want it uh, at that time to go in, in that direction. So the classical guitar was the obvious choice. Ah, yeah, that makes it sense. By the... It was by mistake. <laughs> Well, the, the piano can be very, very intimidating. I mean, I'm 55 now, and I would still love to play the piano, but every time I, I look at it, I have one right over there, my brain says, uh, that's, that, that just seems too hard. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I imagine it was a little bit of the same, but because yes. I don't really know much about the Lyra, um, I didn't know there was a almost like a school of training for it, right? That there wasn't some old sage, you know, five five streets down that knew how to play that all the neighborhood kids went to. Nothing like that. Uh, nothing like that. And you know, since it's a traditional instrument, um, it's not. Uh, it does not have an academic way of studying. Yeah. So um, it's a little bit uh, how to put it. You can learn the right way. There's no right way. You have to stretch your ear. And, you know, for a little kid, um, even I liked it uh, very much. It was it was difficult to mm. not to have a certain way of uh, learning something. Yeah. Guitar is a classical instrument. Of course, um, academically speaking, we have uh, better knowledge about uh, studying uh, and right. learning the uh, classical guitar. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. I know you mentioned this a second ago. Influences, the whole question behind it is always an annoyance because it's kind of an obvious thing that people ask in interviews. But I have to know, I mean, who who shook up your world? Who was the Who was the first person or what was the first piece of music that you heard that you said, oh, I want to do that? Yeah, again, uh, there are many, many, many uh, traditional Greek music uh, that I love. And um, because my parents uh, were listening to that music, that was, uh, you know, uh, my first knowing w w with that genre. So yeah. uh, 
for uh, as far as music goes, the first thing I was listening to was uh, traditional Greek music. Okay. So my influences start there. Uh, of course, th there was a development, and uh, mm -hmm. when I I was learning guitar, uh, a lot of classical, you know, composers um, uh, and classical guitar players, and some flamencos, and then I went to electric guitar, and that it was by then uh, when the massive influences uh, influences came by. So um, influences. I would say, I would say all the cliche, you know, composers like right. Bach yeah. and all the Baroque era. Uh, I would say some Greek names that I, I don't really have to tell you because uh, <laughs> they are not well known. Sure. And uh, as far as guitar players uh, go, um, again, I, I will say some cliche names. Of course, Ingvar Malmsteen is uh, was. Yeah. A great influence, and I yes. think all modern guitar players have Malmsteen as an influence. Yes, yes, and he's the uh, Beatles. He's the Beatles of your of of our generation, if you will. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. At least as guitar players, yeah. Yes, yes, and uh, there's no, you know, it's the truth. Uh, we may don't like some stuff about his persona, but musically, musically speaking, um, it was, you know. Uh, it was mind blowing, even mm -hmm. you know, uh, at my age, uh, when I was a teenager, still it was mind blowing. So, mm -hmm. uh, Malmsteen, of course, the um, uh, the cacophony duet with the uh, Marty Friedman and Jason Baker, yeah, so uh, great, yeah. Uh, then the more progressive uh, metal players like Petrucci and Romeo, especially uh, Romeo, Michael. I was Yes, I I knew you were gonna say Michael Romeo. I love him. Yeah. He deserves. I, I'm gonna say something very offensive right now. <laughs> Michael Romeo deserves to be in a better band. Uh, is there any better band than Symphony X? I think it's it's great. No, it's great. Don't get me wrong. I'm a drummer, so every time I hear uh, what's his name? Is it Jason, the drummer? Uh, Jason Rulo, I think. Yeah, yeah. I his his he's a great drummer. Don't get me wrong. I can't stand that he can't hold the tempo. He rushes. <laughs> he rushes like crazy. And live, it's awful. It's just. I mean. I mean. I've seen them a number of times, and they're very, very good. It's just that the tempo just you know just goes uphill. <laughs> it never. He never <laughs> ever ever finds a center. He just keeps going. <laughs> Hey, obviously that's a bad thing, okay? But yeah. you know they're very creative, and uh, oh yeah, yeah they yeah. have a special you know <laughs> chapter in the music book. Yeah, I and I agree. Uh, you know Michael Romeo, uh, he's especially a, a very you know I admire him that much because uh, not only he plays guitar but he orchestrates, he's writing all the orchestral stuff. He's amazing. So yeah. yes, Michael Romeo. I had his guitar. I had oh. his caparison. And really? I played with that guitar. Yes. Uh, you know, he, he is my main influence. And for the modern, more modern uh, players, um, I like Paul Gordingham. I like Daniel Gotardo with all his um, uh, crazy eight finger style tappings. Yeah. So if, these are my influences as far as guitar goes. Uh, of course, you know, growing up, uh, I understand that having uh, influences like um, Hans Zimmer or Danny Elfman or um, uh, the, the Williams, you know, all yeah. the classical composers and cinema composers yes. uh, uh, have a greater uh, role to play in my music. Yes, yes. So these as well. Uh, there are three, you know, three giants. Uh, holding my musical, you know, st structure. Um, the traditional um, um, genre, the classical, and the more kind of uh, guitar-driven uh, yeah, genre yeah. and styles. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot in common. We, we definitely listen to a lot of the same stuff. I was curious, though, I had written in my notes, I wondered if you were a fan at all of uh, Al Di Miola. 
Yes, yes. I, I, you know, uh, I have listened to him a lot. Uh, I like him very, very much. It's not that I'm not a, a, an acoustic guitar player, so mm-hmm. uh, I have studied him, but not that much. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. But I, I, I really, really like him, especially in his early days, like the casino, you know, that yes. era. The more yes. Latin, you know, with the crazy synthesizer stuff. Not uh, that uh, jazz, um, yeah, modern uh, stuff that he has done. Yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you. I like the stuff from '81 back. Yes. I want to. I want to hear the stuff with Jan Hammer, Chick Korea, Return yes. to Forever. You know, yes, Egyptian yes. Egyptian Danza. You Egyptian know, danza. Yes. oh, so good. Um, well, I assume growing up in Greece has to be epic. You know, so, so much of the world has based its ideals and morals and human code right as a result of teachings that were founded there the atmosphere that greece seems to be and again this is coming from an outsider so i have no idea i've never been there but was your childhood one of freedom or was it challenging to to be a, a youth in greece uh you know um it's um how should i put it all uh, these uh, higher ethics that the ancient um, Greeks uh, offered in the whole world, uh, you know, we have them, but mm. uh, we do not keep them that much. So mm. uh, it's the possibility that you as an outsider knows more about ancient Greek history than, uh, you do. Is, is very, <laughs> that, uh, than we do is very, very high. Wow. Um, I think we have, you know, uh, normal European uh, um, life. Mm. It's not that we are the descendants of the ancient Greeks, so we have uh, (laughs) a different uh, quality of life and uh, Zeus uh, has power. (sighs) No, I get it. it's, it's, It's super normal. The only challenging thing is that here in Greece, all the people listening to Greek music. So if you want to do something, you know, more unique and different, that is a, 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 that's a problem because hmm. you don't have uh, many options to play that music live. You know, the people will not listen to your music uh, as uh, easily as they will uh, listen to uh, a true traditional modern, you know, a Greek uh, song and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. I, I think I think as an outsider, especially an American, we have a very warped sense of what Greece is, right? Uh, in the last 10 years, we see it as a society that has severe financial difficulty, right? Yes. But, but, but before that, we see it as this sort of beautiful, peaceful place that was once dominated by Rome, you know what I mean? But but had these had these uh, beautiful philosophical ways of being, which I know is just from the movies. It's not reality. You know, it, it, it's not reality. It's it's not reality, unfortunately. You know, m- myself uh, because I, I like tradition and um, I want to learn more things. Uh, I have studied the ancient Greek uh, philosophy and history. I myself, um, I am, you know, I'm some kind of a scientist. I am an engineer, basically. Oh, okay. Uh, my day job is a mechanical engineer. That's my, you know, my major um, job. Uh, so I-, I love to learn and I love to read. So myself, I'm trying uh, to be honest about my tradition and my ancestors, but that's not the thing uh, with all the um, the modern Greek people. Mm, mm. It's really interesting too that you're a mechanical engineer because music is math. So it, it makes sense that you're looking at the world through subdivision. You know how long how long have you done that? Uh, how long how long have uh, I been a mechanical engineer? You know, mm-hmm. you know. I'm 30 years old right now, and I'm doing this uh, since my university days, uh, back in, 
I don't know, uh, 10 years from now, something like yeah. that. Yeah. And it's an inter interesting thing uh, what you're saying. You're exactly right. Uh, music uh, is like math, mm -hmm. but not like, you know, the arithmetical side of things. The more mathematical uh, side mm -hmm. of things, where we're talking about uh, differentiation and uh, limits and all that, you know, kind of philosophical things and problems you have to solve. Uh, when you're creating music and you're writing something, um, it's the same procedure, you know, when you have all the elements and you must manipulate them like you're manipulating numbers or variables and you want to come up with something that makes sense and it functions. <laughs> yeah. Whether it is an equation or a, 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 mute, a, a track, a song. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there are simila similarities. And uh, what I have found is um, the better engineer uh, I was, the better musician uh, I became. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's because you're... I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but you you parse everything through those vertical corridors. There's a there's a rhythm to everything in nature. That's what I love about life in general. That even our bodies. And I'm not a mathematician or a or somebody like yourself, an engineer. I I don't necessarily think like that, but I understand that we are. Life is corridored, right? There's pieces that happen, and this has to happen so that can happen, if that makes sense. And I think that applies definitely to music. Arrangement, yeah, so yeah, to speak. There are a lot of correlations between all the elements that are happening. And, uh, you know, you uh, let's hope that every and each, each one of us uh, in his life will come up to a point that... Uh, He's going to say, ah, oh, now it makes sense. You know, yeah. all these differences, the different elements. So uh, that was what, what I was trying to do with my album. Mm. It has different elements, but when the album ends, I want the listener uh, to say or to think, oh, now it makes sense. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Um, this is an odd question. But one of your videos, I noticed, um, began with a Bible verse. Um, I believe from Daniel, if I remember correctly. Perhaps I'm incorrect, but I think I'm correct. Um, was Is the Bible or uh, Christianity or traditional sort of, you know, whether it's Catholicism or whatever, because I, you know, everybody's different. Um, but is it a curiosity? Is it a part of your life? Um, is it philosophically what seems to work with your music? How, how does it, how's the interplay? Yeah, uh, it's a, it's a matter of uh, a higher spirituality, basically. Okay. Um, what I personally think is the the Orthodox, uh, you know, um, church and religion um, is a very deep and, um, you know, it can move, it, it can create tension because uh, in the Orthodox um, life, there has been many bloodshed, you know, we have uh, the martyrs, we had all that very dark past. Yes. Um, and at the end of the day, it was for a, a higher, you know, ethic and a higher spirituality. Mm -hmm. And it's not that particularly I am, um, you know, I want to support the old, uh, the whole Orthodox, you know, system mm -hmm. and Christianity, but it has, a, a lot of power and I, I, I want to you know have that power in um, in my music yes obviously it won't be a very an obvious thing when you're listening to my music you won't think oh that's orthodox metal lots but right. I, I want to have that as, that aesthetic yeah and 
let, let's not forget um, all my album is talking about uh, very bloodshed stuff and uh, creepy and uh, sinister. <laughs> that, but I that, want to keep that higher spirituality aesthetic on. So Yes, yes. No, that makes complete sense. And I had a feeling it was something along those lines. Um, I, I know it can be very difficult, too, to talk about this sort of thing. So I want to make sure you understand. I appreciate you being open about that. A lot of... Uh, uh, a spiritual practice or religion tends to be something that makes people very uncomfortable. Um, but, you know, I talk openly about my own faith, but I also don't insist upon others, my faith, right? It's, 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 it's pure and special to me. And I just yeah. want to do my best to love on people. Um, but I love asking that question because I'm always curious how faith and spiritualism, uh, intersects with our lives and especially our music right because your music has like you said it has dark qualities to it but i think it's because anybody who's filled with light is curious about the darkness uh, that's a, a very nice way to put it all right so we keep having problems but that's cool because george is the greatest guy in the world um i wanted to ask about the guitar um, you're playing a Val Raven guitar and it looks to me that they're handcrafted and custom all the way around. And I'm curious with so many styles of guitars, the colors and shapes and tones, why the Val Raven and why do you play an extended range? Is it strictly for the symphonic aspect or you just really dig eight strings? Uh, uh, you know, uh, let's be honest, uh, you know, having options and having, you know, uh, a wider range yeah. is always a good thing. There's yeah. nothing bad about this. Um, it's, not, it's not difficult to play when you get used to it. It's a, a whole other world of uh, possibilities and options. Yeah. So yeah. definitely uh, having an extended bass guitar is good. You can change your tuning. You can do everything, basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is great about the, the, the headless uh, stuff and all the new modern, you know, the modern ergonomical style of a uh, guitar is that they are really ergonomical. Mm -hmm. They uh, have less material and they are focused to be ergonomical. So it's better for us players. They're lighter. They're easier to play. You can and, uh, go around with them, you know, and in my personal opinion, they look better. Mm. Uh, now, uh, I agree. Raven, uh, have all that, and the most important thing in the business today is that we have a strong, you know, relationship, a strong partnership. And mm. what I mean by that is I have a, a couple of friends that I can talk to and I can tell them you know I want that and that and that be very specific and they uh, will be very responsive so yeah. uh, and that's the important thing about creating a musical instrument to have some friends with knowledge you know um, and love and passion about what we're doing yes and, uh, do something and tailor to your needs uh, yeah. But Robin may not be, you know, a, a great, big, uh, well-known name. But for me, they are the best guitars because I have built and I have found something that no one else could build for me. And mm. that's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have super quality. They have uh, all the best, you know, wood combinations and exotic stuff that you could ask for. <laughs> And that's the great thing that I have options and they can deliver. And yeah. uh, at the end of the day, I have something <clears throat> so unique that is meant for me. And I have, you know, a tool that it will help me uh, manifest what I have in my head, musically speaking. Yeah. Yeah, that makes complete sense. I love that. I have the same 
perspective on craftsmanship, right? Uh, having something unique that's dialed in to me is so important, even if nobody else understands it. I love the idea of having something that is singular, that was made for me to my specifications. And it motivates me to write around that because it it's such an inspiring piece of wood you hold in your hand. Exactly. And we're talking about inspiration. And um, you know, as a musician and, uh, and a player, that when you have a sound that inspires you, it drives yeah. you to create. If you have something that, you know, it's not that good, that you don't really like, but you're saying, ha, huh, it may work. I don't know. We will fix it in the mix uh, in a magical way somehow. You're not starting you know, the right way. And that's right. very important in creating music. Of course, if you are creative, you will create music uh, no matter what. But having that inspiration, you know, kickstart is, uh, is a great thing. It's a great yeah. thing. And uh, about the Raven guitars, um, they are amazing aesthetically. So when I look at the guitar, you know, she tells me, come. You know, play with me, create something with <laughs> Touch me. Touch me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, she, a romantic relationship. Yes, yes, yes. She's your lover. You're gently yeah. stroking the neck. Yeah, yeah. It's it's of course, of course. that that's fantastic. Um, last year you released the first Alchemist, yeah. um, and you mentioned earlier that it's a concept album. Did I hear that correctly? Yes. Um, yes. So I've listened to it, but I don't necessarily know what it's what it's about to you, right? What does it mean to you? And maybe maybe you don't want to reveal that. But um, what was the idea behind it? And uh, and who are the other musicians? Yeah, um, a, 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 an important thing that uh, I must say is that um, although you know the album has my name. Um, it's not 100%, you know, my um, musicianship Wonderful. and my ideas. We are three in this band and we have a guest, so you can say we are, we are four. And uh, each and every one um, of my partners uh, share equal, uh, you know, work in this album. Mm. Uh, we have Nikitas Mandolas on the drums. It's so good. We, we have Tassos Seremetis on the oud. We have wow. a traditional player playing wood, and we have Mora um, uh, on vocals and uh, on one of the tracks. Um, so it's important uh, to say that, and um, to answer to your um, to your question, what uh, it means to me. Um, as I said before, uh, we have written this album in a very dark. Um, situation. Mm -hmm. We have we were quarantine. We in quarantine. We have lockdown. We m must stay at home, and we have you know we must create something unique, something uh, basically to keep us alive, to keep us mm -hmm. to keep us alive, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Having all the dark, you know, um, around you um, gave birth to this musical uh, construction. Mm. So uh, we were in a very uh, bad situation and the first alchemist uh, is exactly that embodiment. Uh, what it means to me, uh, it means to me exactly that. We, we wanted to create a fictional character yeah. uh, that, uh, you know, uh, is between something scientific and some, uh, you know, something more sinister with um, dark and uh, with dark spirituality. Mm -hmm. And uh, that guy wanted to gain the knowledge for, from his ancestors and to do so basically
he slays each and every one of them um, mm. to have that knowledge. And if if you know a little bit about alchemy, yeah, in real life, alchemy was uh, something very, very dark. You know, they wanted to make the fifth element to have um, eternal life. Um, you know, something uh, pseudo-scientific. Right, but, right. Uh, I, again, something uh, that is um, very, very close with religion and uh, what is true and the God is doing this and I must see God. So, you know, all of that is the first Alchemist. Yeah. And it's a concept album because each and every track uh, is basically a scene like watching a movie. It's a play, uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Each track um, describes a scene and we have some themes I know it's not very obvious but we have some musical themes that they are being uh, re they're repeating in the in right. the whole in the full album we have right. repetition of themes with yeah. different orchestration and arrangement exactly like uh, watching a play or a movie yeah I love that because because musically similar to Pink Floyd's The Wall there are repeating motifs. Yeah. And and it connects the whole piece together. I mean, I knew it was a, a concept album without really knowing much about it simply because I could hear those musical moments that I was like, okay, so it's all interconnected. There's a story here that really matters. Yeah, there's a story. There's a you story. Know? There's a story. I find it interesting too that you know you talked about orthodoxy earlier and that it does seem that the best of us are always we're seeking we're we're looking for sort of god in our experiences right we're looking for answers to our questions but what's really fascinating about what you're creating is usually the darker stories to me to me <laughs> mean that there's so much light in you that you're actually almost seeking balance Right. You're 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 kind of you're, it's not that you're pursuing darkness, but you're saying I'm not afraid of this darkness, but I'm curious about it. It's exactly. interesting. It, it's intriguing to me, but it's I know. Yes, yes. Right. But I know truth and it doesn't bother me. It doesn't scare me, but I want to talk about it because I know it exists. And I'm curious about how people used to pursue and maybe still do pursue the idea of being gods themselves yeah the god complex yeah it's so fascinating yeah yeah it's fascinating and you know uh, you have described it in a very philosophical and um, you know nice way and <laughs> of course there's the other you know shallow way of put it sure everyone loves the bad guy yes you, they're fascinating you're star wars you're watching <laughs> star wars dark vader is the best character in the series. Yes. It has yes. an amazing, you know, theme. It has a great past. He moves you, you know, yes. Yes. sentimentally. So, uh, obviously, when you're creating music, I want to create something that the protagonist is a bad guy. And yeah. I think uh, even bad guys deserve to have... Uh, the first role in something they do and i think secretly because you're a good guy and because i'm a good guy we actually want there to be redemption we want yes. the bad guy to be a bad guy we actually want him to be an awful guy because yeah, yeah. we we want to see him come around and not so he can agree with our philosophical perspectives but because the truth is i think everybody hopes everybody can somehow be okay. You know, I think as humans, we crave our purpose as people, right? Yeah. So we crave for others to agree or to be loved or to be inspired, but we want to affect them. And your story with this character brings the listener in and we can see and hear who this bad guy is, but we want him to be redeemed. And, and, and we're fascinated by him because he represents something we are not. 
Exactly, exactly. Yes. That's so cool. So cool. So, <laughs> so I, I did you like it. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You absolutely. You described it perfectly. <laughs> Even better than I, than I got. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Well, so then what does it lead to? Because I, I imagine, George, you're writing some more material. Are you writing a companion piece to this? Or is it just, you know, a next album? Uh, y y you know, I don't want to make and the first Alchemist uh, part two. So it's a, a completely different approach. Great. Uh, uh, no, it's not, uh, you know, a uh, sequel. It's different. It's still very, very dark, but it's more organic. You know, the first Alchemist was, uh, you know, massive, um, um, uh, super high orchestrated, um, marvelous, you, you know, uh, construction. But now I, we want something more organic, uh, mm. Not that high dynamic, you know, more earthy, if I can put it. Yeah. More acoustic elements. Mm. Good. Still dark, still dark, still sinister. Um, obviously, we were going to have uh, more, uh, actually, uh, traditional elements. We have a very a great, you know, Balkan orchestra this time. We wow. Won't use, yeah, we won't use the... Um, the Western kind of uh, orchestration. We will use more authentic styles, uh, smaller ensembles, but uh, I, I think they're punctual enough to move. Mm. And I have high hopes for my next, uh, our next creation, because I think it's something super unique. Oh, mm. I, personally, I haven't uh, heard anything like that. It's something like a Balkan song but with metal. Mm. So it has some gypsy elements, like gypsy jazz. So cool. And yeah, it will have uh, all that stuff. Have you uh, considered bringing in an accordion based on the whole Balkan thing? Of course, of course. We will have Good. an accordion. We will have some, uh, you know, gypsy trombones. We will have a, um, some trumpets. Uh, we will have the oud. We will have uh, a, a super romantic... Um, violin you know with all the glissandi that, that, that are very large and the portamentos you know uh, the, the whole um, articulation will be different and yes we will have an accordion that's wonderful i i was never a fan of an accordion until about 10 years ago and i saw actually al di miola i saw him in concert and he had a, he had uh, an albanian uh, accordionist with him and I looked across the stage at him. He played this piece and I just began weeping because it was so plaintive and emotive. And then I turned around and looked at my wife and she's just drenched with tears yes. because it was, it was so beautiful. So yeah. I'm so happy to hear that you're doing this next thing and I can't wait to hear it. Um, you know, Balkan music, for us Balkans, it's something standard. Yeah. Uh, even for us, it's very, very emotional. And mm -hmm. it's even more emotional when we listen to Balkan music combined with something else, something different, a fusion. Mm. Uh, as you said uh, about Aldi Meola, yes, I know that a good accordion player, uh, a true accordion a Balkan player uh, from Albania or... Um, you know, a woodwind player like the clarinet, gypsy yes. clarinet, yes. or the zurna, or some, you know, very, very expressive um, instruments have the power to move you. So combine that with the metal that by default has the power to move you. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I can't wait. Let's I can't. Let's go. Oh, it's going to be amazing because if the last album, I mean, the first Alchemist is so well produced and so thoughtful and so emotional this you can't fail i mean i mean i get it we're humans we make mistakes all the time i, I can't can. but if you I stay on that if, but if you stay on that i think it's 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 always interesting how musicians hear the material we're creating and we see it through such a jaded eye we don't allow it to actually be free 
But when you really, when you record it and you give it up to the world and you release it to the world, the world's going to make its own decisions, but well-written, incredibly well-performed, you know, clear talent in there will always inspire above what you think is right or wrong with your material. So I, I personally can't wait. You know, uh, when I was creating the first Alchemist, uh, I, I was uh, telling myself, I love what I'm doing. I am 100% sure it will fail. No <laughs> one will ever listen a guitar player orchestrating <laughs> and playing, you know, Arabic stuff and yeah. no lyrics and some uh, no solo and orchestration. It, it, it was uh, something not very popular uh, when we're talking about guitar players. Sure. And I'm very happy that when I released um, the first uh, Alchemist, they loved it. You know, uh, every you know review from um, webzines and other magazines and reviewers, and they have, you know, they have loved the album. And I was amazed. You know, I, I did something that, that I wanted. And it came from a genuine, genuine place uh, inside of me. But I thought it will fail. Uh, yeah. I thought it, 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 I will listen. Me and my friends will listen. <laughs> and yeah. we're saying, you know, something like that. Yeah. It's, it's so important to be true to yourself. Yeah. Yes. And, yes. and to not, right? Like, I mean, as an example, I, I know... I am honored to be speaking to you today. This is such a joy for me and such a blessing because I am honored. I am to me, honored. I, to me, I don't deserve it. Right. I don't think there's anything special about me at all. I'm, I'm very hard on myself, but we, we all are. It's the artistic dilemma. What we create, we want to create something different in our heads and what comes out is us. That's, that's it. But exactly. the beautiful thing is to one is to never stop. And two, most importantly, is to know that a group of people, maybe small, maybe large, but a group of people will love what they are hearing from you and they'll talk about it because those are the people you the whole time have been creating for. You just didn't know it. And that is so important to, to, to release it to them because they're waiting to hear it. You know, that's really amazing. That's super amazing. And lis listening to all those good, you know, words, they mean the world to me. So thank you. Thank you. I I I'm the one I, I should be thanking you. Because as musicians, that's our payment. Yes. We don't yes. have other payments. And uh, I'm an instrumentalist, you know, uh, from Greece. And I'm writing uh, symphonic uh, tracks. I'm not doing for the payment. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, th that's not. You know, I'm not gaining that man that much money from this to live. Yeah. I have another job to yeah. do that. So I want my art to be honest and to be true. Yeah, it's so good, man. I I'll tell you. Uh, I'll end this way. Uh, I know we're at the end of our time, but yes. I really believe that when we die, we're going to stand in front of our creator and not, not, not just strictly to judge us, but to thank us. And I thought about this for the last week. Once I found out I was going to interview you, I was really excited because I knew I would have a chance to tell you this. And so this is what I think and you've cleared it up for me as well, is I believe that when you die, my friend, you're going to stand in front of our creator and he's going to say, thank you for listening to me. <laughs> thank That's you. way too much. That's way well, too much. It, but, it's, but it's true, George, because you're pursuing, you wanted to be a, you wanted to play Lyra, but yet... But the, but there was something in you that said, no, 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 no. It, it quietly whispered in your ear. The Lyra is a good start, but what about this? And here you are. 
you've become an exceptional musician because you have, you've practiced and rehearsed and rehearsed and practiced and practiced and rehearsed, right? You've done all these things and you've written until you're probably sore and you've stayed up way too late and you've been broken and beaten by the artistic bug that's sort of, you know, inside of you. And yet you remain and you've done something with such clarity and vision and purpose and you understand it and you know that even though it's about a dark character, it's about a good creation. And, and I really, truly believe that. I mean, I'm not blowing smoke. I really, truly believe that you're going to get those. Thank you. Good job, faithful servant. I really think it's going to come to you, brother. Thank you very much, Rob. That's the best compliment I could ever receive.